Gaming setups don't have to be expensive. In this video, I'm going to prove that. We're going to put together a full gaming desk with pretty much everything that you need, regardless of whether you want to play with a gamepad, keyboard, mouse. We've got 120 hertz monitors. We've even got a little bit of RGB flourish. So if you're sick and tired of all of these stupidly expensive setups and want something you can actually afford, then stay tuned after a short word from this video's sponsor. DDR5 memory is here and Corsair has you covered. Extra bandwidth, sky high speeds and slick new designs make Corsair DDR5 shine with new Intel XMP 3.0 profiles that allow for crazy high overclocks with just a single click. Choose Vengeance for stylish performance without breaking the bank or go all out with Dominator Platinum for insane speeds, stability and jaw dropping RGB effects. Learn more today with that link down below. We're actually going to take the camera off of the tripod today. We're breaking in all of the rules because immediately this lovely standing desk is out it's far too expensive and let's be honest you probably want to sit down anyway because you've been listening to all of those boring pc centric videos all day and you need a rest and instead of this unnecessary expense we're going to use a very unknown brand that not many people have used before called ikea with their beckon desk this was actually my own personal desk that i was using for years it's pretty good to be honest with you it doesn't have any extra features but it's big it's sturdy and if you want to grab like an ultra wide monitor at a later date it'll support that i can't remember exactly how much this one costs actually but it's around about 100 pounds give or take and i think you can actually transform this into a standing desk if you want you definitely do get what you pay for though there's nothing wrong with this but it's not exactly uh, screaming quality like a proper solid bit of wood we love wood on this channel let's bring my third leg into the picture and then let's work out how this thing assembles i mean it's not really many screws so hopefully it just sort of sits in you can really see how badly cheap rgb strips age by the way these were not originally yellow that is uh, pretty disgusting feet go in hole this is probably not how you're supposed to do it. It's like musical chairs, but musical desks. Come on, tighten up. Let's adjust the height, because, oh gosh. Let's see how good my eye is. Not very good at all. Placing the top on. Right, there you go. Budget gaming desk sorted. The next piece of the puzzle then is our display. And this is one I actually got pretty cheap, an Amazon warehouse deal. This is the Iyama Red Eagle. It's 1080p full HD, 165 hertz, and more importantly, it is actually an IPS panel. So the image quality on this, while it's not gonna rival like a thousand pound monitor, it's actually a pretty good display. I think the only real downside with going for something like this is the fact that obviously it is a little bit smaller. This is a 24 inch display. But that means that the actual image quality looks a little bit better. You get a better PPI and not payment protection insurance. I'm talking about pixels per inch because I'm nerdy like that. Oh, it's stuff falling out. Take it out of its cellophane and you'll be left with a monitor that not only looks pretty good, it's a little bit plain and boring I suppose, but it's got some decent adjustments. You don't have swivel, which is why it made that horrible noise, but you do have height adjust and tilt, which to be honest with you, especially if you're only using a single display is all you ever need. So let's add this to our setup and that'll give you a sense of scale. And then we can swing back to arguably the most important, most exciting bit. Yes, that mouse did just fall on my foot. The Xbox Series S. And this, let's be honest, is the less exciting of the two new consoles. You can get the Xbox Series X, which is more powerful, it does 4K 120, whereas this is only 1080p 120. But ultimately, at the end of the day, when Series Xs are going for around about 600 pounds here in the UK, this thing is actually available to buy. You can get this for around about 250 pounds, I think, or $300 in the US. I've seen it in both the US and the UK. And it's got pretty much all of the same functionality as the Series X. It's just the graphics aren't quite as good. You're going to be able to play all of the same games that you'd be able to play on a Series X, including using that Game Pass, which means that gaming is cheaper than ever. But the other thing that makes this a little bit more unique and stands out is the fact that you can actually use a keyboard and a mouse in certain games, which is definitely something I've been wanting to test for ages. Games like Gears Tactics, I absolutely love, but they're just not really the same with a controller, and being able to use a keyboard and mouse, I think would be a big boon. This Asus Tough Keyboard is definitely a little bit overkill for this rig. I'm sure a lot of people would go for something that's around about 30 pounds, but as it's fully mechanical, this is gonna feel amazing, and you can actually get this for around about 75 pounds, which I think is insane. Ooh. 
Tasty. It's a similar theme with the mouse. Again, this thing is absolute brilliant value for money. This is the G203 from Logitech. For a budget-friendly gaming mouse, I have no idea how the sensor in this thing is as good as it is. Don't get me wrong, it's definitely not as good as the more premium ones, and it's not necessarily got the best build quality out there. But for a starter, budget-friendly gaming mouse, I don't think anyone really is going to have any complaints about this at all. So let's grab our Series X and place this next to our monitor our mouse, our keyboard. It is definitely quite weird not having a computer to plug into. This will be the first time I think I've actually ever used a keyboard and a mouse with an Xbox, which should be interesting. And then now I think we should be ready for our moment of truth. Solid noise. There's actually speakers built into this monitor, which I didn't even realize. They are not gonna sound great, which is why we're using a headset. This is the Tough Gaming H3 from Asus. It'll plug straight into your controller. But I guess in a pinch, it's something that's nice to have. Downloading a 4.2 gigabyte update. And remember that this doesn't actually have a disk drive, so you're gonna be downloading everything. While that download is underway, it's time to talk about the final bit of the setup, the RGB lights. And let me say first that I love Philips Hue. I've used loads of different lighting systems out there. I think that Philips Hue is the best. However, it is so expensive that when other alternatives are available, it is definitely worth checking them out. So these are some lights from Govee, and I've never actually used these before. If we look over here, like over here, you can see that I have some little bars here. These are called the play bars, and these are from Philips Hue. And this is essentially Govee's version of those. It looks as if you get two in a box. You can use these on the back of a monitor or standing up like so. Inside the Pro version, you do actually get this little camera. So this sits upon your monitor. And then the clever bit is that this can then read your screen and essentially work out what sort of colors are going on where. And then it can relay this behind your desk. Oh, those are quite bright, actually. <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting, but I guess not that. Red, yellow, green. That's quite good for an Xbox setup, actually. We can now wheel in our Noble Chairs icon in anthracite material. It's a little bit cheaper. It's around about 320 quid. I like that you can actually use the keyboard in the menus, though. That is definitely very useful, especially if you're going to be playing at a desk. 1080p, 60 hertz, but we can change that to 120. Bang, and uh, that is in. <laughs> it's an Xbox, but it says press enter to play. No, I am genuinely excited about this. That's the keyboard. It works on a console. I've waited years for this. This is absolutely incredible. The fact that we're able to get this level of fidelity from something that costs 250 pounds and yet we're still able to use a keyboard and a mouse. I'm pretty sure that this is only running at 60 FPS. Ooh, got ya. For real, it actually is a little bit unfair, I think, that I can use the mouse and keyboard and everyone else to start with a controller. It works just as it would on a PC, though. I really have to say, I'm very surprised at that. Yeah, I'm happy. If you want to play Halo Infinite on a cheaper setup, then this is definitely the way to do it. I mean, if you wanted to buy a PC that could actually run this in today's money, you're probably looking at, like, what, £800, 1000 to get this level of fidelity and frame rate? It's a no-brainer. <gasps> we actually have a mouse cursor! I'm not sure, by the way, about these lights, because while they definitely work great, I love the colours and, again, the affordability, the video link thing doesn't really seem to work properly to me. It seems that they're always stuck on this colour. It's not reading the screen properly. It might be that this is just too small a screen. I think that's probably what it is. It's aimed more for a TV. If you want my advice, just get the Plus version without the camera thing. But yes, here we go, look. Mouse and keyboard, Gears Tactics running beautifully on this system. Again, feels like 60 FPS, not 120. And I think this is gonna be a common theme, realistically, if you are gonna go for the Series S. You do have to expect that getting 120 is gonna be infrequent, shall we say. But regardless, it still gives you the full package, really. Gears Tactics is a great game, by the way. If you haven't actually played this, it's great. Ah, Doom Eternal look. You get a choice between balanced and 120 FPS. No mouse and keyboard support, which is a shame. Okay, you can immediately notice that this is 120 FPS. Yes, it is definitely a little bit backwards because this would be so much better if you could actually use a mouse and keyboard as well. But obviously, if you are going to use this as more of a traditional console and you're going to sit a little bit further back, use a bigger TV and actually use a controller, then obviously this is a great addition to have. And in a game like Doom Eternal, it is definitely very much appreciated. Our final game for testing is some Forza Horizon 5 and this is running at 30 FPS in its default state which is just horrible. Quality 
to performance, yes please. Oh, restart now. Ugh. And I guarantee there are some people down in the comments saying, I prefer 30 FPS, it's more cinematic. Get out. Already my eyes, my eyes can breathe again. Honestly, Forza Horizon is such a great game and the fact that it's so scalable is awesome because this definitely doesn't look quite as good as it will on a Series X or of course on a bigger TV in 4K. But if you are playing on a smaller screen like this, it's not actually that noticeable. I'm not entirely sure about the music mix this year. I'm a big fan of Pulse, but I think the other games had better music. I don't know, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Controversial. Let me know your thoughts on this down below. Do you think an Xbox Series S actually is the right choice for budget gaming, even with mouse and keyboard support? If you do want to check out current pricing on anything that was featured in this setup, then as always, you can find it linked down below with my Amazon affiliate links. And while you're down there, grab your DDR5 with Corsair. Vengeance DDR5 has a slick new compact look and has been designed to get the very best out of Intel's Alder Lake CPUs. Dominator Platinum DDR5, meanwhile, takes it to an entirely new level with its gorgeous heat spreader finish and vivid RGB lighting that's all powered by Corsair IQ. Level up your memory today with that link down below. But thank you so much for watching, smash that like button, get yourself subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one.